G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. View a video request time for this one going out to a good mate of mine, Cherry Bakewell. The poor guy's having some serious arguments with Ubuntu server at the moment, specifically Ubuntu 1710. No surprise there. Now, what he's trying to do is get the damn thing to statically assign, and I'm actually going to show you a little bit of a shortcut that should make it easier. Now, the good thing with Cherry is, as I've always said, he gives me all the details I need in order to produce a video like this. So I'm going to show you the easiest way, mate, to fix your problem. Let's get into it. Alrighty. Here we are in our trusty Workstation 12 Pro. And here's our Ubuntu 17.10 server. 4 gig of RAM, dual-core CPU, just an 80 gig hard drive for the purposes of this. Now... This is probably the easiest workaround I know for getting Ubuntu to go static. Let me show you. Now, undoubtedly, I'm going to get people complain that they can't see it, but stiff, I can't change the resolution. Funnily enough. Right. Now, before we get into this, those who complain about the fact you can't see the resolution or you can't see what I'm doing, I can't help it at the moment. I can't zoom in. So either deal with it or stiff. All right, we'll go to English. Let's install it. All right, now, so we've got English. that no go with US English which funnily enough is the keyboard that we use okay so this is a workaround now the, the, there is the other one of adjusting the host file and everything but this is probably the easiest way of doing it So as always, Ubuntu will do auto config. All right, you can see there. But there's a way of around that. So it'll automatically always go. So what you actually do is you go, go back, and you want to configure the network manually. Now, Cherry's. Uh, entire network topology re IPing subnet net mask is exactly the same as mine. Not going to work because obviously I'm going to have arguments between Ubuntu and my NIS. So, but I'm going to show you what you can do. So you click back when it brings up the name of the machine and you go configure network manually. Then you can go. Oops. Go can continue, you can go continue, and then your gateway, and then your DNS, or your name server, whatever you want to call it. Then you can do your host name. We don't have a domain name. And we'll go backyard, backyard. Yes, uh, no. Okay, so now what it'll go off and do is um, set the clock, obviously. Um, oh, it has picked up. I am actually in Melbourne. That's nice to see. Not like some of them who think I'm in Sydney for some silly reason. All right. We will use the entire disk. Yes. SCSI disk A. Now we'll go off and install the system. Yeah. 
Oh, my internet's fairly quick. That's nice. <laughs> For once. It looks like it's sitting on a Linux kernel 4.13. Oh, okay. If you can hear rustling in the background. The other half's also down here in the back out IT office doing her little bit of creative stuff at the moment. As we say to all our friends and when we're out garage sailing, the other half's the creative one and I'm the tech. So anything creative, she does. <laughs> I can't. All right. So continue with that. I'm also going to let you in on another good idea with Ubuntu that both myself and other techs that I know of do the same thing. Jeez, my internet is actually fairly quick today. That's actually quite nice. All right. Now, multiple uh, options here. Personally, I would take that. I don't bother with that. I tend to do this with Ubuntu, is to just install the security updates automatically. You guys will probably disagree with that. That's fair, but that's the way I do it. Now, the other thing that I am wary of is that, LAMP. Now, what I tend to do personally is add manually to it. So I download Apache, I download MySQL, and I download PHP. Um, I've noticed this with Debian. And in some cases, Ubuntu server, that if you select a LAMP, you get an earlier version of Apache and my PHP, uh, MySQL and PHP. So I tend to add them manually. Same with Samba. I do the same thing. I don't bother with Tomcat Java server. I never have. And I don't bother with Postgres. So you can choose how you want to do it. I do it manually, so I download Apache, I download MySQL, and I download PHP manually. We've done that with OpenBSD, and you can do it here as well. And I know other techs that do the same thing. So we'll go continue with that. Um, as my phone goes off with an email, as always. Jeez, my internet's quick today. Wow. Horribly slow this morning. It was nice and quick now, which is really good. So we'll do a full setup of this. I, I'm not a big fan of Ubuntu server personally. But then again, you've got to realize I prefer OpenBSD to run my server anyway. I prefer Unix over Linux for an NIS any day. Sure, you setting up um, Samba to run your PDC using an Ubuntu or a Debian server to have Windows workstations running off it. <coughs> is actually easier than Unix, but I still I still prefer Unix to run the DACP and DNS. <coughs> Excuse me. do here we will go yes with that right. update initial RAM file system done Now we boot into our new Ubuntu server. Oh, it hasn't grabbed it again. Oh, no, there we go. So now we log in. Uh, 
log in. All right. Now, um, all right, so we go into the ETC. Now I've got to remember where it is. Uh, okay, so there it is there. It's under the hosts. So you can see here, there's our IP address, which we've done manually. Now I've just got to remember where to put the subnet and everything like that. Uh, can't actually remember where it puts it now. Um, there it is, networks. All right, so you can see here under the networks, we've got the default, we've got the loop back with the local link and then we've got our local net, which is 192.168.1.0, all right? The easiest way to get Ubuntu to be a statically assigned server is to actually statically do it at install, which, as you've seen, is pretty easy to do. Just make sure it did get it. So there it is there. Now, if we go into the... Oh, that's not... Oh, no, that's itself, isn't it, with Ubuntu? I actually can't remember where it puts... Uh... I think I'm missing a few things here. Hang on. Is that where it is? No, that's not where it is. Okay. So you've got your hosts for your DACP. You've got your networks for your subnet. Now, where are Ubuntu now putting the uh, there's system D? It should be my gate or my name. I would have thought. Um, I can't actually find it, viewers. But the easiest way of getting it to be static is to do it at install. It's going to be a lot easier that way, um, Cherry, than to do it the other way. Because um, I can't actually find... No, that's definitely not it. This is why I don't like Ubuntu. Because... You can never actually... Uh, no, you can't actually do it. The other way to do it would be to do if config. Because this also doesn't tell you what the host... Uh, There's our host, which is the actual server. That's the actual host name. Aha. Uh. Uh -huh. Now, it should be in here. There's your local loops. Now, where is our... Ah, there it is. Oh. That 
that's interesting. So there's your local loops. I can't see where they do it now. Isn't that terrible? But anyway, the easiest way is to do Ubuntu statically assigned at the installation would be the easiest way of doing it because, I mean, look, if you have to um, do it the other way, um, you could always change it in network and hosts, which I can show you here. So you can change hosts and your networks, all right? But what I can't find is the MyGate. But anyway, I would probably do your, your static assigning in uh, the setup initially instead of trying to do it in here. It's going to make your life a lot easier, much, much easier. Anyway, there we go. Hopefully that helps both Cherry Ad and anyone else that needs help. Stick around. More to come. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.